Howdy y'all, DJTJ back with another Inkscape tutorial. Today, we're going to be giving a software overview. Alright, so some of you might be interested in learning the software Inkscape. And I'm going to take you through how to get the functionality of the software down in this series of tutorials. The first thing you're going to want to do today is launch the software. So when you install it, it creates a desktop icon. It looks like this. You can double click that. If for some reason you do not see that icon, you can go to your Windows search bar, start typing in Inkscape, and it should come up. If you don't see either one of those places, you might need to try reinstalling the software. All right, so once you launch Inkscape, this is what comes up. This is your standard default layout. You have the toolbar on your left. You have other options on your right, some quick launch keys here, your swatches at the bottom, and your drop downs up top. The first thing you need to understand about Inkscape is that it is a vector software. Vector software is a vector graphic software is based off mathematical formulas. It's based off equations, geometry, and an X and Y plot system. The benefit of having that type of system in place is that it makes your graphics infinitely scalable. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're working with Photoshop or GIMP or another software that is bitmap or roster based, then if I was to create this star in that software and I decided to make it this big, I save the software, come back the next day, and I said, you know what, I need that star a little bigger. If I blew it up to this big, you're going to see pixelation. However, that will not happen in vector software. This star will say just as crisp and sharp no matter how large I make it or how small. I can make it that tiny, and let's zoom in. Looks perfect. Zoom back out. Now let's blow it back up, center on it, still perfectly shaped star. So that is the power of vector software. Another benefit is that it does make your file size smaller when you use vector software. Okay, like I would stated earlier, we won't really be covering the toolbar in this tutorial. We have most of that covered in later tutorials. So today, I'll take you through some of these drop downs and give you an overview of what they do. The first one is a file. Now, this is a pretty standard drop down that you'll see on any Windows software. It's going to give you the options to save, to export, to open a new file, such as that. Um, one of the important things here is the document properties is located there. This is where you can adjust the size of the artboard, um, the file anything like that. Now, I get the question all the time. How do I remove this rectangle in the middle of the screen? It's in my way and it's messing up my project. Well, it's not really in the way. You have to think of it as, as your paper. So if I was to create art, I think of this area as my desk. And I might be building some things out here and making some circles and just generally working on things on this side. Once I get a finished piece, I might decide to put it onto my final paper. Now, this area is going to be generally your printed area. So if you want to print something out, like a flyer or a poster, this is the area you're going to want it to, to maintain all your shapes in. Also, when you're exporting, it's a good rule to have all of this area and only export that. So, once again, we don't want to get rid of this board. We want to try to work on it. If you're finding that you can't fit your shapes there, like you've made stuff too big and, and as you're building it, it's, it's way out of hand. Well, there's two things, guys. One is, remember, we can shrink this down and move it there. Also, if for whatever reason you want to work small, you can zoom into your artboard and work as much as you want here press 5, zoom back out. So it's not really in the way, you just have to understand what its function is. 
The next drop down is edit. It gives you a lot of the standard functions that any Windows software is with a cut, a copy. Your undo, which is control Z, or redo, shift control Z, is a very important function to use in this software. If I made a shape, say I deleted it by accident, I can control Z that to bring it back. Or I can shift control Z to revert to the way it was before. Your view is where you control zooming in. Also, it'll allow you to put page grid down. That can be very helpful if you're doing something then you want to make things very precise, along with putting guides out. All those can be controlled from here. Setting up your layout, if you want it full screen, or if you have a different layout that you want to have the software show up in, that can be controlled here as well. The next drop down is layers. It has all the functionality and controls for when you're working with and in layers in this software. However, um, we'll be going over that in a later tutorial. The object drop down is where you have all your controls to manipulate an object. So, if I made something, now I can come and rotate it. Or I can flip it. Or you can group items together, such as these two items are independent right now. However, if I just want to grab them over, I go to object, I can go to group or control G, control G. Now they are they act as one. Now that's a not a permanent thing so I can always go and ungroup them again. Next you have the paths drop down. Paths is very um, the paths drop down is one of the most powerful functionality in this software. You get to do some really cool things with that. For example, let's put that over the top. Let's select them both. Let's go up to paths and let's go difference. Alright? It allows you to do some really interesting things and make some very neat art. We'll have a full tutorial on paths later in the series. The text drop down allows you to put text on a path or generally manipulate text, which you can make with the text tool. And once again, we'll have a later tutorial on how to work that. Filters is another very powerful drop down. It allows you to put bevels and blurs, and with combinations of these textures and different filters or effects you can create some pretty wild um, works of art so example for that if you want to go up to paths I'm sorry if you want to go up to filters and put a blur on this you can go to blur the drop down or the dialog box will come up switch to live preview and you can see how much you're blurring it just adds extra functionality to the software Extensions is the next drop down. Extensions are basically extra software or programs that sort of embedded in Inkscape and it allows a fuller range of functionality. An example I always give is you can go to render and barcode and render out a barcode in probably like 30 seconds as opposed to going and building one from scratch. Finally, the help drop down allows you to the Inkscape manual which can answer any simple or advanced questions about the software and about Inkscape if you're wondering what version that you're running maybe yours didn't look like mine um, this is where you'll find that information out thank you guys for watching the tutorial please watch Inkscape tutorial number two where we'll be going over the square tool